Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. And I, I really want to know. Really All right, and welcome to another episode of Successfully Chaotic. Today, we are diving into that topic that is at the heart of our journey from chaos to clarity, how to transform chaos into your catalyst for success. Uh, let's be honest with ourselves here for a minute. Life can throw some curveballs. It can throw us into some turbulent situations. And I've been there. I totally get it. It can be, it can be rough. You can have days that feel like they are so heavy that no amount of people's sprinkling sparkly positivity dust all over you is going to change how you feel about that very moment. And it's okay. You know, it is okay that you feel like everything sucks that moment because it does. Let's say it for what it is. Let's not try to paint over it. Let's say, all right, this sucks. The situation sucks. This day sucks, whatever. But the key is to not stay there. The key is to not take those things that life throws us and allow it to make our life stay chaotic and stay turbulent. The problem is not that chaos happens. The problem is that we think that we have to stay in that chaos, but, but we don't because it is our response that defines our path, not what happens. It's how we respond to those things. So today in this episode, we're going to explore some actionable steps and insights on how to turn chaos into a powerful force that's going to propel you toward your goals. So let's get started. All right. Let, again, we're being honest here. Think about it. Have you ever felt like that your life was just spiraling? Like you wake up, you get out of bed, life is going to be great. You know, you get out that planner with those stickers you had put on there. Bam, it is going to be a good day. But then it just starts spiraling out of control, one thing after another. And before you know it, your whole day is in complete chaos. If you felt like that, don't worry because you are not alone. You are in the right place because I am there quite often. It is part of life with a lot of, you know, things, right? A lot of, a lot of children, businesses, all the things that make my life full and happy also can make my life very chaotic. Honestly, Chaos is woven into the very fabric of our universe. It's not just random disorder. It's actually a natural part of life. And it's from the intricate patterns of the fractals in nature to the unpredictability of quantum particles and science. You know, it's science. I love physics. I love science. And within this stuff, it actually reveals that chaos is all around us all the time. So if we know this and we embrace that this complexity is out there, it can help us navigate life's uncertainties and can even help us transform this chaos into a catalyst for our success. So when things are starting to feel like super chaotic, it's really helpful to remember that it's not always a problem that we can solve, but a natural phenomenon to understand. Stand. And when we understand those things, we can really make that plan to choose how we respond. So creative disruption, that is something that I, I love that term, creative disruption. I mean, just saying it's like, ooh, that's going to get some things done, right? It is literally the catalyst for innovation. It is the art of challenging the status quo breaking free from our routine and welcoming new and often unconventional ideas in the world of entrepreneurship. It's, it's not just about adapting to change, but it's about driving it. Disruption is the spark that ignites progress, but it's not chaos for chaos sake. It is strategic chaos, a controlled demolition of the old to make way for the new. 
It is listening to what goes on in your everyday life and preparing and planning for that chaos. Think of successful companies like Apple or Airbnb, Tesla. They didn't just follow the beaten path. They carved their own path. They didn't fear a chaos. They harnessed it. The chaos of change can be uncomfortable, but in it, this discomfort that we feel, that is exactly where growth and transformation happens. So I'm going to challenge you. Think about what chaos happens in your life. And if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that I say all the time that everybody has their own flavor of chaos. And, you know, we also define our own version of success, right? What is your flavor of chaos? You know, with me, again, having a lot of kids, it is a norm come winter time, somebody's going to get the stomach bug or like a cold or something. If you have children, you know how much that can disrupt your entire day. <laughs> Waking up, thinking that you have your day, day played, planned out, and then having that day just completely like implode because your kid wakes up sick, it can make you feel like the entire day is spiraling into chaos. You know, you have a full day ahead of you with work and meetings and stuff that needs to get done, but then you're having to you know, step over here and take care of a child that's that's sick and, you know, it can make for a very chaotic, chaotic day, you know, but one thing that you can do is anticipate that, right? It's inevitable. If you're, if you've got kids, they're going to get sick, you know, sometimes it's going to happen and that's okay, right? We could talk about why that's, um, that's, you know, um, important for building their immune system all day long, but we can, all say, yeah, it's going to happen. So if we know that, how can we still set forth a plan in our day to make sure that we're able to still capture a, a win for the day, some success in the day? And for me, that was establishing different work areas. I have a home office. I also here at my building have a room where the kids can go. If they're not too sick to leave the home, but they really just don't need to be around anybody else. They have a room that they can go here in my office and they're able to you know, do some schoolwork or, you know, watch a show or play a game or read a book or whatever, right? So I've already anticipated that chaos and I've made plans for it because I've been there. I've had the days where I didn't do that, didn't have that. And it created disruption, but not creative disruption, right? I'm challenging you, think about those things. And then Think about also those things that pop up, uh, these, these things that maybe you didn't anticipate. It's the first time it's popped up, but it allows you to be creative about this disruption. It allows you to think outside of the box and create something that's maybe not of the norm, that maybe is a, a new way of doing something, or maybe it's just a new way for you to do something. Embracing the chaos of change is empowering. Instead of resisting it, ask yourself, how can I use this disruption as a springboard to success? Again, going back to the sick kid thing, that's an easy one for me. I can still have a successful day with a sick kid because I'm still able to get done what I need to get done and not feel guilty about leaving my child, you know, with somebody while they're sick. I could still be, you know, mom making the chicken broth and the soup and the tea at the same time as, you know, checking the things off my list. I have used that to create a way that I still can be successful in my day. There's also ways that you can, like I mentioned earlier, use that to create a whole different product, a whole different process, a new way of thinking. Embracing the chaos of change instead of resisting it allows you to use the disruption as a springboard for your success. It's in the moments of upheaval that the most significant opportunities actually lie. So your challenge is to be adaptable, be open to new ideas, be willing to change the norms because in the chaos, that, that's where you're gonna find those little nuggets. And here's the thing about chaos. It's not always destructive when we disrupt our own routines, we question our own assumptions, we 
actually invite that chaos to allow us to tap into our creative processes. We open up the door to innovation. Chaos can be the muse that inspires our breakthroughs if we let it. Take a look at history's creative geniuses like Leonardo da Vinci, who thrived in the chaos of his notebooks filled with sketches, ideas, and random thoughts. Or maybe consider the legendary Eureka moments of Archimedes, which happened in the midst of a chaotic battle. These individuals didn't shy away from chaos. They leaned into it. So for those of you who are seeking to harness the creative potential, just remember that chaos isn't the enemy. It's the canvas that we paint on. Our innovation is painted into a beautiful painting. So welcome the unexpected and embrace that messiness of creativity and let the chaos be your guide to success. Just know that while you're doing this, the road from chaos to success, it, it's not straight. And that's perfectly okay. Sometimes chaos is also that compass that's pointing us where we need to go. We allow it to kind of shake things up a little bit and transform our way of thinking, disrupt our normal way of doing things. And if you're maybe navigating that chaos right now on your path to success, I, I know I've been there and it doesn't feel like it's this like amazing groundbreaking new beginning, but it is if you allow it to be, it's again, how you choose to respond, allowing it to be the greatest ally in your journey to success, you know, letting it be the spark that ignites that creativity instead of allowing it to be that negative voice that tells you that you shouldn't be doing this because of fill in the blank reason, or you can't because of all these things going on. The, the fact that you're listening to this right now tells me that you're striving for success. You're striving to remember that chaos and creativity are actually intertwined that you're needing to hear somebody say that because I know when I was going through a, a lot of heavy things, I needed to hear that. I needed to hear somebody say that, you know, entrepreneurship and life's challenges, it's not just what happens to us, but it's how we perceive it. It's how we react to it. And it's a resilient and positive mindset that I'm, that's actually that North star that helps navigate us through the even the most turbulent of seas. And you may ask yourself, you know, why does mindset even matter? They do because our thoughts and beliefs, they shape our reality. And when we view chaos as this insurmountable obstacle that we can never overcome, it becomes just that. But when we allow ourselves to see it as an opportunity for growth and learning, it transforms into this stepping stone, one after another, that leads us to success. Cultivating a resilient mindset, it's not about denying chaos or pretending that it doesn't exist, but embracing it acknowledging its presence and choosing how to respond. It's understanding that we have the power to shift our perspective and make that chaos work for us. It's empowerment. It's putting the power back into our own hands. And I know you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, what do I need to do with this? Get, get out a pen and a paper and, and write these few things down. I'm, I'm telling you, I've done this. This is something that I had to go through that long, hard, you know, shadow work on. And, and I'm going to give it to you. Some practical, practical tips for nurturing a resilient mindset in the face of chaos can be your ticket. Number one, 
practice mindfulness. That is a huge thing that was a life changer for me. And in the moment when I was in the super heaviness of all the things I was going through, the idea that I was supposed to sit and be mindful was like, "Mm, okay, like when is that supposed to happen? But I promise you, figure out a way to carve out those moments. I don't care if it's five minutes, three minutes, one minute. It doesn't even matter. Whatever you can carve out. I I chose to do it first thing in the morning before everybody was up. You may choose to do it at night when everybody's in bed or at lunchtime when you're able to sneak away for a minute. If you can do it five minutes or 10 minutes, even better. But don't let time restrict you. Don't wait for that perfect moment where the moon and the stars align and you get that, you know, 10 minutes of peace because it may not happen. Carve out whatever time you can to sit and just be mind, be mindful, sit and think. And sure, you could close your eyes and meditate as we see people do. There's nothing wrong with that, but it may take you some time to get to that point. For me, my mindfulness started with my yoga practice and, you know, started with making sure that I'm going outside every day. It's standing, you know, on the grass barefooted. It's walking in the woods. It's connecting with nature. It's like I said, practicing my yoga, moving my body at the same time that I'm being mindful about how my body feels, clearing my mind. It's being present in the moment because mindfulness helps us stay present and it lessens the grip of the chaotic thoughts. It allows us to observe chaos without judgment and to respond with clarity. Number two, embrace change. I realize that some people do not like change. I I, I have like this like hate, like love hate relationship with it. In some ways I love it. Um, I love like trying new things, but the things that I've already decided that I love, I want part of my life. They're in my everyday routine. I don't want those disrupted trying new things. I embrace that. But changing things that's already an active part of my life, I've struggled. But being able to embrace that change helps you to recognize that chaos often precedes change. And change is where the growth happens. So when you embrace that change, you're recognizing that you're embracing your future progress. You're embracing your future success. Number three, seek solutions. This is a huge one because especially if you've got a lot of crazy things going on that are not of your doing, it is easy to get bogged down in the blame game. And I'm not here to say that people don't do things that aren't completely crap because they do. And, but I am here to say that pointing fingers, placing blame is not the way that you create change. Now, if you're in a dangerous situation, a bad situation, you should have those boundaries to so remove yourself from the situation. But you need to seek solutions. Removing yourself from the situation is the solution. Instead of dwelling on what's causing the chaos and why, why, why on that kind of stuff, you know, yes, you need to figure out why is it happening, what is causing it. But once you figured that out, you don't need to dwell on it. You need to focus on finding a solution. You need to shift away from that blame game and shift the perspective to empower you to take action, to change that situation. Number four, stay positive. Now, we're not talking about toxic positivity. Remember I said earlier in this episode that some days suck, some moments suck. I'm not saying gloss over that, you know, sweep your feelings under the rug and be like, everything is great. That's not healthy. That's no. What I'm saying with this is cultivate a positive attitude. And you do that by focusing on what you can control. 
and the lessons that you can learn from the chaos going on around you. At the same time, you're realizing the things that you have no control over. And that's okay. You're, you're stepping away from a situation. You're deciding you're going to focus on the things you can control. That is a huge part of nurturing a resilient mindset. And the last one is build resilience. You know, physical exercise strengthens the body. And we all know that, right? Challenges, they strengthen the mind. They help you to think outside of the box, help you with critical thinking and all kinds of things. And again, I'm not talking about traumatic situations. Yes, you can still get out of those. You can break free from those. You can heal from those. But I'm talking about just normal chaos in life, right? That helps to challenge and strengthen your mind. So when you embrace that chaos and work through it, it's a workout for your resilience. And it's just a huge way to be able to be resilient, not only in our mindset, but in our daily life. Again, I want to remind you that chaos isn't the enemy. It's a natural part of life and business. And with the right mindset, you can not only navigate chaos, but you can grow and you can make your dreams happen. So if you're striving for success, just just remember this. Remember that that the chaos and the creativity, they're intertwined. Remember that during those really uncomfortable moments of disruption, you can utilize that chaos as a powerful catalyst for your journey to success. If you like this episode, I would really love it if you kind of maybe leave me a comment. When I'm doing these solo episodes, obviously I don't have anybody to kind of chat back and forth with, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this. You know, chat with me just like you were on the show. Chat with me like you were on here. We were discussing this. I, I love to hear that. There's There's so many ways that, you know, this topic can go. And I, I'm a science nerd. I really love looking at things from a scientific perspective. And that's why I kind of brought in a little bit of the scientific and philosophical perspectives on this earlier. But there's so much that goes into this. You know, there's there's chaos theory and complex, uh, complex systems and um, quantum mechanics and just there's so many other things, right? And it is complex. There's a lot to kind of decipher and think about because yes, the things we do to be able to go from chaos to clarity, they don't seem hard. They're actually very simple. It's the reasons that we don't, the reasons that we end up holding ourselves back. That's, that's what, you know, I find fascinating. And, and I've done it. I've been there. And I think that's why this show is so important for me to do is to be able to help explain things that I figured out along my own journey, right? My own journey to be successfully chaotic. <laughs> so if you found this show helpful, again, leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Life but until next time, you all. I appreciate you all. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights.